There was commotion outside. I did not know what that was. Anyway, we return <laughs> back to the gripping scenes of suits. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So the thing that inspired this video was that I was at an open day the other week. I was working as an ambassador for my law school and quite a few people asked me the same question and that was how much is law school like suits? And honestly I was like taken back by this question. So I was thinking do you know what? There's no better way to answer this question than to watch a bit of suits and decide how much is suits really like the law. Video one. And if anyone found out that you were the one that told me, then they'd know that you cared. Whatever you say. You pretend like you don't care, but you do. You care about the people you work with, you care about the people you work for, and you care about every one of your clients, but you refuse to let people know. No, every That's lawyer ever. You weren't weak the day you walked into my office. You were a man who believed that to win fairly was more important than to win. Do you know what's weird though? It's like, this is meant to be some like mock trial and all she's actually, do all Jessica's actually doing is just marching around, stringing together her own narrative and barely asking him any actual questions. If this is meant to be a cross-examination, like, you can't really do that. You've kind of got to ask questions that like, you can't literally march around the court just going, here's what I think. I'm going to ask you a question every like, I don't know, 10 minutes, but I'm just going to speak about what I think the case is and why I think you've done what you've done, but not bother to actually ask the witness any questions. Like. Uh, is there a question here, your honor? No, there isn't. Well, there should be. <laughs> Is it at all possible that Mike Ross ever attended Harvard Law School? Not unless I had a satellite campus at 5307 Huntington Boulevard in Brooklyn. Oh, the savagery. I can't believe you just threw your mate under the bus. I've never been jealous of Mike Ross in my entire life. And I just caught you in a lie. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, my next move is going to be to call Jenny Griffith to the stand. And she's going to testify that you lied to her for years about dealing. When she found out about it, she left you for Mike Ross. Objection, Badger. She's also going to say... I'm like, also in reality, if you're like, objection, you have to wait for that to be like, sustained or like, overruled. You can't just be like, objection, and the judge is sitting there like... I'm just watching this play out. Like, the judge isn't even responding at all. She's like, Ugh, okay. Let me rephrase. Is Miss Griffith going to be perjuring herself, or are you? Yeah, I was jealous of And if he lied about all of that, what's to make us believe that he wasn't lying about everything else? Wow. I'm not gonna lie, okay? It's good, and I've, I, it's been so long since I've actually seen Suits. I'm talking at least four years, but like, it's good. It's good stuff. See, that's funny because you actually expect these people to believe that I never went to law school at all, and yet still somehow managed to convince the smartest lawyers in the world to make me their youngest partner ever. Whose story's looking more far-fetched now? Oh, no answer? Great. No more questions, Your Honor. I'm like, I don't know if you've noticed this. Zing! I wish, whenever I've done a mock trial, that I would have had the audacity and the confidence to be like Mike in that. Just gonna go in on him, like... Yes or not? But he's kicking your ass. Fair! The defense would like to call its first witness. Right there. He's such a non-lawyer, he doesn't even know the prosecution goes first. And you obviously don't know Jarvis v. the state of New York, Oh, that's another thing. It's like, Jarvis v... But like in the North School, you get so told off for that. I remember all throughout first year, whenever we did like mooting or like mock trials and stuff, whenever anyone was like Smith v blah blah blah, they're like, no, like, it's and. A lot of people be like, R v Brown or R against Brown, but it's actually R and Brown. That's a common thing. That is a common thing. I don't know what it's like in America, but here you get whipped for that. That's just a little thing that you have to be really, really conscious of when you're doing like actual advocacy. Yeah, <laughs> and clearly, it doesn't shine through in telly. No, Jarvis v. the state of New York, 1937, when calling of the first witness. 
just oh, like, and plus he just is there like, oh yeah, there's this random case and just gives the year. The judge would full on pipe up, being like, where is it in your bundle? What is the authority of it? What's the citation? What's the principle? Da da da. da. You can't just get away with going. It's this case, Your Honor, from the 1930s that says this, and then for them to just go, okay, <laughs> on with it, like, no. Again, as my soul is dying. Who's ready for mock trial 2011? What, like make believe trials? You're gonna play Monopoly after? This is your debutante ball. The impression you make on the partners will last. Yeah, thank you for clapping, Steve. I always think what's so interesting is the difference between the US and the UK. In the UK, if you're at a law firm, you do not go to court. Well, especially a city law firm, you would never do a mock trial, you would never do advocacy. Whereas in the US, obviously, the solicitor and barrister are merged to make an attorney. It's like this type of shit in the office. Like, if you did this in the UK, everyone would be like, we haven't done advocacy since mooting in first year or second year of uni, let's not do this. So this would be pure barristers and I think barristers are so cocky, I don't think they'd be down for it. They'd be like, oh. <laughs> what have I got to prove? 8.30. Yeah, in the morning. It's 30 minutes past when you are required to be here, which means it's an hour past when you should be here. Okay, since when do we use a time clock? I feel like even that, in practice, whenever I've been at city law firms, yeah, okay, you should come in early, but a lot of them, I think it obviously depends on the culture of the firm, but a lot of them are pretty chill. Like, if you rocked up at half eight, that'd be pretty freaking early. Most people come in at nine, quarter past nine, half nine, because you have to stay late. You, I don't think you would ever be punished for coming in at half eight. Like, if you came in at half eight, your partner probably wouldn't even be in. I mean, if you rocked up at half 10, 11, yeah, but... You would any job. That is just so, to me, that's just pretty far-fetched, but whatever. Right, but Harvey's- I love the smell of litigation in the morning. It's 8.30. <sighs> but also it's like, he just waltzes into his partner's office like, boom, guns blazing. You would be told off for that though. He could have anyone, he could have a client in his office, he could be on a phone call, he could be on a personal call, to rock in there like you're his equal. I wouldn't go down very well. <laughs> oh, so that was, in a way, a nice little reminisce down a memory lane of law school for the last two years, considering I'm in the holidays now and I haven't actually been doing much law. That was actually quite nice. Like, Suits generally, I haven't seen it for like four years or something, so it's nice to watch it. But I feel like it's so, it's so not law school. Like, oh, the culture is so different. And it's so not law and practice, definitely not in the UK. Obviously, I've got no experience of it in America, but nah. It's interesting to watch it anyway through a law student lens. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.